I, I, I do want to hit on the last two games. I, I'm not going to touch on San Jose State because that was another situation where the, the FCS school, Southern Utah, had not seen anything like what San Jose State has got as far as athletes go. So I don't even think it's worth touching on. It does kind of make me wonder about San Jose State and USC next week. Like I, I wonder if USC doesn't blow their doors off just because. I, I was I was thinking so, the exact same thing, Gary. Yeah, it's a, that line's like fifteen and a half, but we'll. It's a it, yeah, yeah. We'll get there later. Yes, yeah, so we we'll got get plenty there, of time we'll, for next week. We'll get there for SBR and for Bet US. So just we'll, watch we'll the talk about it here too. Well, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll, bit, we'll talk about much. the game, but as yeah. far as our picks and what I go, we'll we'll yeah, get yeah, them out yeah, on there. Yeah, yeah. So for the people that pay us, you got that right. Uh, if you want to start paying us, then we'll tell you here. <laughs> we'll do it here. That's fine. Uh, I, I did notice this. Not playing in 2020 looks really bad right now. New Mexico uh, State scored I three think, points on UTEP. And Gary, home. I think you've got two really bad arguments for that, though. I, I d- don't get me wrong. UConn and New Mexico State were already going to be two of the worst teams in FBS. Right? They're both independents. They both they are could have both terrible. played full 12. 12- 12 game seasons last year. I think they both get the shit kicked out of them the way, exactly the way they did. You you are probably right, but I, I'm, I'm going to bring up... So the scores, of course, Fresno 45 to nothing over UConn and UTEP 30 to 3 over New Mexico State. UConn, let's, uh, let's bring up UConn stats here. Um, that, is, that is New York Times <laughs> National Championship winners. Yes. 2021. Uh, that makes... Two straight years that the defending national title uh, winner has has gotten blasted in the first game. No offense to your Tigers, but <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of an asshole move there. <laughs> hey, uh, you, I wouldn't look. I wouldn't look for UConn's total EPA in this game negative thirty six point nine three. I don't think I have ever seen that. I think they they barely. How is Randy Edsel employed? I at, now, hang on now. At this no, point, don't, I don't know. and don't think he's like. Just been bad. Randy Ansel's been there forever, and he's been terrible. Yes, he's he's been about as bad as you can be. Like it, it does not. I I don't know how it can get better, right? But I, we also have discussed this before. That university has not put any kind of resources into that program at all. As a matter of fact, they took them out of the AAC to where they don't even have a conference. In it. Like they don't. They got nothing. I, I, I would normally say they should go down to the championship level, but here's my problem with that. I think they get the shit kicked out of them there too. Yes, because there's no there's no support from the university. They don't care what happens. Like I I don't understand it at all. But looking at so, the so so here's the here's the problem with that. So there's there's nothing we can look at on these two games. Okay, there's nothing to talk about. Here we go. Hold right? on. This is what I wanted to bring up. Uh, UConn yeah, bring that up. Uh, had 107 total yards in this game, and they had da, 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 107 total yards. They had 30 passes and 35 rushes. So we are talking like 1.2 yards per play, something like that. With New Mexico State, New Mexico State had. Let's see, 190 total yards, 89 passing, 101 rushing, and they were abysmal. I mean, just absolutely atrocious. And, like, New Mexico State only turned the ball over one time. UTEP turned it over twice and still beat them by four touchdowns. Like, <laughs> so let me let me talk to you about your, your they don't care about football up in UConn. A few years ago, and maybe two or three, I mean, they spent like six million dollars on a new locker room for those guys. Now, yeah. obviously, that's a drop in the bucket to like SEC country money for like practice facilities and all that stuff. But I, maybe I'm gross exaggerating this. Maybe it was like a million bucks. I don't know. Maybe a million dollars in up in north, you know, the Northeast doesn't go as far as it does down here, which it obviously does not. I assure you. But like they updated their facilities and did a bunch of stuff. Now I think it was all in the locker room. I don't. I, I, yeah, I don't, I could, it obviously doesn't look like an SEC school. It doesn't look like even most American schools, but I think they tried to start putting money in. And I think that was a the year they maybe won like a game against some small dinky ass school. And they were like, why? It was, why uh, we? it was 2019. Yeah. I was going to say, I thought it was recently and they were terrible. And I think all their, hell that wasn't it the last year they were in the American uh, yes, it says this round of good news arrived only a day or two after UConn football was launched into a state of uncertainty by the athletic department's decision yeah. to join the Big East in other sports. Um, 
I couldn't, I can't, I can't explain or understand what they're trying to do, but somebody there cares enough about football to have tried to put money into the program. I don't. It's, it's not just one person or, or even just a handful of people. It is if you do not have university support. Oh, if you no, don't have it has to come from administration. Yeah, it's, the administration has to be willing to support this thing, and, and they don't. And it is brutally obvious. Yeah. So I don't know what to think about that. New Mexico State, Doug Martin, I think that he is going to be on his way out after this. We'll see what ends up happening. Well, there, he's but, been there for nine years also, Gary. Oh, I know. I know. So what is I mean, this? It's not like season? these coaches have been terrible and and like they're just had two or three years to turn things around. They've been terrible and have been there for a decade. Well, they so there was discussion not of Edsel, Martin Edsel left and then came like, back. And, it was it, basically heading into 2020 after the 2019 season. It was like, OK, we have got a coach that's got like a couple of years left on his deal and we don't really feel like paying the buyout. So, oh yeah, but I believe his contract is up at the end of the season. It is, so it's not going to pay anything to to get him out of there. So, I mean, we'll see. It just depends on what they feel like doing, what they want to do. But by the way, Fresno State looks absolutely fantastic. I think they are going to be a force to be reckoned with. Jake Hayner is awesome quarterback. Do you think they're going to be a force to be reckoned with, or do you think UConn's just that bad? I think UConn is really, really bad. But I if they played San Jose, would would that game would have been a lot different, right? Yes, I think it definitely okay. would have been different, but I do think the Fresno State uh, with Ronnie Rivers at, at running back, like they got a ton of weapons at wide receiver, and yep. Kalen DeBoer, like I've, I, you and I have talked about him many times. He's the, the new have. head coach there. He was the yep. OC there under Jeff Tedford, and they were a covering machine. machine. That offense was awesome. And remember, he was at Indiana for one season when they finally got things turned around and started bowling there under Tom Allen, and then he came back and took the head coaching job at Fresno. Like I, I trust DeBoer. Like last no, year, no, I, I do too. I know, do too. I do too. Last I year, rookie in this season. game and and, and everything, and I you know, and I like I like a school like that going up into the Power Five area and getting a getting a big time transfer quarterback. That's probably your best bet. Like if you're these smaller G five schools, that's got to be your best bet than recruiting, right? Yeah, it's just it's just go pick off players that were too good at one point in time to come to your school. They've got a year or two under them, so you don't have as much coaching and training to do. You just bring them in, show them your system, but you kind of know what they can do and know what they can't. And and I like those situations for these G5 schools. Yes. They went up to Washington, got him a quarterback, says, I know what this guy's abilities are. He's not going to start there. Hey, come start for me, baby. Yeah. Fresno's a hell of a lot nicer than Seattle right now. Let's go. Man, of course, right. Fresno gets on fire. So. <laughs> I was about to say, Fresno was like 120 degrees on the field. <laughs> Do you read that tweet uh, where they had they had they different melted cleats? Melted shoes? They, yes. melted, uh, they had to change out their cleats to yes. keep them from melting? Yes. Do you think UConn had the cleats that were melting? Probably. They probably didn't bring extra cleats. Just a guess. Just a guess. <laughs> hey, by the way, do we take anything from the Utah, or not Utah, uh, UTEP beatdown? Like it's Dana Demel's team, like ready to go bowling and stuff. Or no, no, I don't think so. Either. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not taking anything from any of these games outside of the fact that I went three and one this weekend, and and the one game I got two extra bets on, I hit both of those. It was just everything against UConn. Just that makes sense. That just makes insane. sense. Insane. No, I, I bet uh, Fresno first half line. Uh, Fresno did not bet first whole half. Game. UConn's yeah. under team total. Fresno's over team total. And uh, and then Fresno for the game was the pick I had, and like that, the only thing I missed on was Hawaii, and I missed way wrong. If you told me that Hawaii was going to score less than twenty points, I would I would have bet a lot of money on that. I think their team total was like twenty three and a half, twenty four and a half. Yeah, I think it, I think it got um, to twenty four and a half by game time. It closed it closed at twenty four and a half because that's that's where I gave it out on our live show. But but man, I I'm going to tell you, there ain't no way on earth I thought this team wasn't going to score twenty. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of felt I the same wrong. way. I missed. That's the only thing I missed. Everything else Saturday kind of went according to plan. Outside Pizza. of Illinois, actually won the game, which I love seeing. I just didn't have it. Yeah, no, it, it makes sense. Makes sense. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.